Mr. President, I rise today to honor the wonderful life and extraordinary work of Trish Radenberg. It is with a heavy heart that I note the passing of my dear friend and esteemed ally in our national effort to defeat Alzheimer's disease. Many of my colleagues in this chamber not only counted Trish as a friend, but also greatly respected her as a champion in the war against an international enemy, Alzheimer's disease. It is through our work on shedding light on this horrific disease and creating a roadmap for a cure and strategies for prevention that Trish and I developed an enduring friendship. She and I shared the experience of having our beloved mothers claimed by this cruel and merciless illness. We knew the ravages of Alzheimer's on our loved ones firsthand and vowed that other people should not have to experience such suffering. The impact of her mother's uh, illness motivated Trish and her cherished husband, George, to dedicate much of the past two decades to fighting Alzheimer's disease. Together, they raised funds, founded and led the innovative Us Against Alzheimer's organization, committed their time, their energy, their personal resources and passion to bring Alzheimer's disease out of the shadows and to advocate for the policies and research needed to stop this disease and prevent it from occurring in the future. Trish was a multi-dimensional force of nature, creative, caring, and compassionate. She was a devoted daughter and caregiver to her mother. She was a loving mother to her two children, Alyssa and Tyler, their spouses and four grandchildren. And as so many of us here know, she was completely dedicated to her husband, George, a man of enormous talent and business acumen. My wife, Susan, and I have been privileged to call Trish and George treasured friends for more than 20 years. To say that George and Trish were ideal partners does not fully capture their love story. They were soulmates, complementing each other perfectly and creating a powerful, enchanting, and dynamic duet. Many of us have tales of our interactions with Trish and George, witnessing firsthand Trish's indefatigable spirit, perseverance, and leadership. Simply put, you never wanted to tell Trish maybe or no, particularly when the issue was Alzheimer's disease. This was compounded by the fact that Trish was a master communicator and humorist. She did not mince words and knew how to convey a message often delivered with memorable one-liners. A gifted writer, Trish authored novels, plays, sitcoms, and op-eds, with many of her recent pieces calling attention to the grave threat of Alzheimer's disease. I had the honor of playing the role of her mother's doctor on stage in Trish's award-winning play, Surviving Grace, which shines a spotlight on Alzheimer's impact, not only on the patient, but on their families as well. But it was right here in the Senate that Trish began her professional career as a speechwriter for Senator Harrison Williams of her home state of New Jersey. Therefore, it is particularly fitting that this body pause to recognize this remarkable woman and her many accomplishments across so many fields. In closing, it is difficult for me to comprehend that Trish has passed away and that we will no longer hear her powerful voice, her luminous laughter, her one-liners, experience her creativity and benefit from her passionate conviction that we must keep fighting to defeat Alzheimer's. The indomitable memory of Trish Vredenberg, an amazing, creative, and pioneering woman, motivates us all to live to the fullest and to accelerate our work so that we can soon reach the day when Alzheimer's disease is found only in the history books. And in these ways, her inspirational legacy lives on. George continues their important work with Trish in his heart, in her family's love, and in her friends and colleagues' admiration. Mr. President, this was a great woman who we just lost, a champion for, the find, for finding the cure for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and I am so honored to be able
to have the United States Senate as the place where I can tell the nation of the work of this great woman. And with that, Mr. President, I yield back the balance of my time.